Welcome to another God's awesome creation. This is Dennis. Today I want to talk to you about some truly, truly unique creatures that God made, although everything is unique in its own way. These are particularly interesting, and they're uh, abyssal animals that live in the dark depths of the sea, where the temperatures of water is always close to freezing, even at the equator. And the pressure may be as much as 15,000 pounds per square inch compared to 15 pounds per square inch at sea level. So God made some very interesting creatures to live in these, what to man, are very harsh environments. More than 80% of the ocean floor is a mile or more below the surface, the depth at which the abyssal zone begins in most areas. In these deep waters, sponges and sea lilies are common, on the bottom anyways. Um, there are numerous single-celled animals called protozoa, each with a little skeleton of its own, and a variety of other invertebrates, including sea anemones, corals, segmented worms, clams, snailfish, starfish, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, horseshoe crabs, barnacles, and crusta crustaceans. Although no group is especially abundant, animals of all major groups live in the deep sea. They apparently evolved, and let me say right here, I don't believe in evolution. The word comes up often in reading uh, things like this. Evolution, in my opinion, is a creation of the devil to teach man that he is um, nothing more than a, a highly advanced animal and is answerable to no one except himself. Anyways, having said that, they apparently evolved from forms that at one time lived close to the surface. No plant can live in these sunless waters, so abyssal animals feed on each other or on dead plants and animals that sift down steadily from the lighted area of the sea above. Many abyssal animals have special organs for producing red, violet, or green lights. Some have enormous eyes to see in the, in the dimness. Let me pause here again and say, you know, if these had evolved, well, they couldn't have evolved, because if they rely on these special organs to catch food at that depth, they would have, they would have starved to death by the time these organs evolved, because science always says it takes millions and millions and millions and millions of years for evolutionary change. So anyways, having thought of that, I continue. Others have small but very sensitive eyes, while still others have no eyes at all. Those with weak or no eyes often have sensitive feelers. Some deep sea fishes have tremendous mouths and numerous sharp teeth. Many can stretch their stomachs to hold animals larger than themselves. Sponges and sea lilies grow on long stalks. Sea urchins and sea cucumbers have greatly flattened bodies, while crawling types of crustaceans have extra long legs covered with bristles to keep them from sinking into the soft mud. Lime forms poorly in the depths, so the shells of animals are weak or lacking. Due to the great pressure, the body cavities of abyssal animals are filled with oil or water rather than air. Most abyssal animals are dull red, violet, brown, or black, and they are generally smaller than their surface relatives. Fishes that uh, live in the abyssal zone are small, few attaining the length of three feet. The invertebrates of the deep are among the largest in, the, in their groups. However, glass sponges are are as much as four feet in diameter and three feet tall. Next time, we'll look at another one of God's creations that uh, lights up um, as self-luminescent um, like some of these deep sea fish, except it doesn't live in the deep oceans. See you next time. God bless.